show. Well, some news outlets seem to have completely forgotten who was leading the impeachment charge. Oh, wait, let me fix that for you. Uh, much better. I wanted to go and talk to one of the real leaders on impeachment, so I traveled to Washington and sat down with Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. This last week of news has felt like a decade, and between the impeachment inquiry, the whistleblower drama, and JLo's performance in Hustlers, I am feeling overstimulated. In an effort to find a place of calm in this political shitstorm, I went to D.C. to sit down with Congresswoman Omar, a.k.a. the president's enemy number one, and member of the... OMG, OMG, is that... Okay, be cool, be normal, Samantha. Oh, hey, girl, how's it going? Good girl. What's up? No, you're in, you're in, you're in. Oh, oh. <laughs> Come on, thank you. Now that I'm officially part of the squad, oh, mm -hmm, this looks nice here. Here's Representative Omar talking about something she was calling for long before it was on Vogue, impeachment. Did you know when you were a little girl that one day you would grow up to impeach a sitting president? No. A lot of people think that we would take joy mm -hmm. uh, in impeaching this president because we don't like him. But we take joy in making sure that when we say we're going to protect the rule of law, um, that the American people know that we are serious about that. Well, I'm glad that you are not taking joy in it. I, however, I just am always so happy when I think that Don Jr.'s upset. That does slightly make me happy. <laughs> And Trump has already found a way to deflect impeachment by making it about my squad, which I am totes a part of. Why do you think that the president focuses so much on you? I mean, I think he's terrified by any women who are practicing shine theory, who have each other's back. But I think for me, he is terrified by the fact that I sit on the intersectionality of many identities that he really despises. A woman, uh, an immigrant, um, Muslim, mm -hmm. um, refugee, and hijabi in one beautiful package. Oh, yes. He's also terrified of sharks, stairs, and books. So, um, there's this. Oh, that is excellent. Have you ever seen anything more beautiful? Trump's not the only one who uses the Congresswoman to justify his own ends. It's the entire Republican Party and Fox News. What's it like to live as a woman who is perpetually taken out of context? I don't really care that much. Because I know that the people who are actively working to take me out of context are just vilifying and dismissing my voice anyway. Mm -hmm. The fact that I live rent-free in their head doesn't mean that they get to live rent-free in mine, so. Interesting. I just scream into jars. This one's from 2017. Here, I brought you one. That's my gift to you. Just go like this. Put it on a shelf. All right. But instead of yelling into jars, Representative Omar is doing work. She's trying to end our drone wars, getting us to stop supporting dictators, and speaking out about how we aren't taking refugees in. You know, audaciously suggesting that American actions be in line with American morals. <laughs> LOL. You know, we're very comfortable in being the hero in every story. Mm -hmm. We are not comfortable anytime somebody reminds us we have been a villain. And it is my job to make sure that we can end this story um, as a hero. Why is that important to you? I mean, I escaped war at the age of eight, lived in a refugee camp for four years. Mm -hmm. I know what destruction looks like. Now I'm a member of Congress. Um, I am, in so many ways, the American story. Oh, what a great movie that would be. I wonder which white person they'll cast to play the hero of that movie. Maybe Dakota Fanning. Oh, she'd be great. Oh, and this isn't even one of the top 10 worst things that's happened this year. How are we gonna unstink? 
America. You know, conversations, right? My mm -hmm. um, family has always said, you know, it's hard to hate up close. It's important not to get too close to Stephen Miller, though. You do not want that. I mean, I still think there is rehabilitation that could be possible for white supremacists like Stephen Miller. Okay. Uh, they could use, uh, I think, some light, some love, some joy in their life. Blink once if you mean that, blink twice if you don't. Okay. Wow. Now are you just blinking because you have to blink? Blinking aside, what are we fighting for right now? What's at stake in 2020? Well, we're fighting for the soul of our country, for the values of equality, of pluralism, of uh, religious liberty, you know, the values that my grandfather was uh, excited about um, and talked about when we lived in the refugee camp. And we need a president who can live up to that. Okay. I have you down for not Biden. Definitely not Biden. We'll be right back. <laughs>